H-Town, what it do? I'm Nick Stevenson, the president of Houston Sports. He is Ruben Calvillo, Mr. 713. Mm. This is the Twin Toros Podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining us for the 14th episode. Proud to be here on ESPN Houston once again. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Once again, if you are not yet following Ruben on 713 Houston Sports, please do so. I will make sure I leave his link tree in the description so you can follow all of his socials as well he is on x ig and tiktok um and then i you can find me at houston sports state of the union podcast right here on youtube and i will put the link tree in the description as well so you can find all of my socials ruben mm. i don't know how to feel about this game man at one hand six and two is a good feeling texans get the win 23 to 20 uh defense showed out but at the same time i feel like we sound like a broken record at this point talking about this offensive line. How are you feeling about the win on what still, despite how it feels, is a victory Monday? Look, man, six and two is a hell of a lot better than five and three. I yeah. think that this was a, you know, an, I mean, you could call it an ugly win for this Houston Texans team. That's how they've been winning all year. This should be no surprise to anyone, if yeah. I'm being completely honest. Not anymore. His offense is what it is. And this offensive line is an issue, continues to be an issue. We finally got to see, though, the benching of Kenyon Green. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But my overall reaction, we are 6-2. and two. This team is not healthy. Once this team gets healthy, I expect a totally different offense. But I can't complain about a W, man. But now is the time to start locking in. You got the Lions, you got the Cowboys, you got the Chiefs, right? You got the hard part of your schedule coming up. Hey, yeah. you got a game in a couple of days, boys. I, I think you hit the nail on the head, Ruben. Um, I think it's time we change our expectation of how this team wins football games. They're not going to be the greatest show on turf that we maybe thought they were in the offseason when they did brought in Stephon Diggs, uh, when they brought in Joe Mixon. Number one, Joe Mixon – uh, has been the MVP of this team so far, if you ask me. Top 10 running him, back in the league? Yeah, him and Kaimi Fairbairn, I would say. Those two are the MVPs of this season so far. Um, that's how they're going to win games. They're going to play good defense, and they're going to run the ball. And you've talked about it before. D'Amico Ryans is probably okay with that. Um, as far as the offense is concerned, I think that they need to continue to run the ball to Joe Mixon and be able to pass the ball just good enough um, that they're able to move the chains if they do find themselves in long down and distance. I just I, I I'm done expecting this team uh, to you know have one of those four or five hundred yard uh, passing games like that's at least right now like you said as as is it's not going to happen and I'm and I'm done trying to expect it. Uh, like I said, I feel like we sound like a broken record talking about this O line. Uh, it was trash yesterday, man. Um, Bobby Slowick play call is not working. We've talked about that exhaustingly. Um, I do. Let's go ahead and talk about the Kenyon Green situation now because he finally comes out the game, and uh, the offense looks really good. And they go all the way down the field. They score a touchdown. He gets hurt on the touchdown play. Uh, I think Joe Mixon probably appreciates Patterson as well, man, because he followed him into that blue tent to make sure he was okay. There was a clear difference between the two, man. No, it was night and day, and it felt like a fresh breath of air for mm -hmm. this Houston Texan offense, and you immediately see a scoring drive. With Kenyon Green, man, it's over. It's safe to call him a bust, one of Nick Casario's worst ever decisions in the draft, right? You passed up on guys like Tyler Lindenbaum, Jordan Davis, um, no. Kyle Hamilton, safety for the Ravens. You traded back for Kenyon Green, and yeah. he's still very young. But unfortunately, man, it just has not worked out. I don't think it is going to work out. I don't think there's a future here for Kenyon Green. He is going to get C.J. Stroud hurt if he continues to play like this. Yeah. And it was evident against the Indianapolis Colts. The first hit he took, you were like, man, this might have been a problem. Then immediately after – you know, gives up a sack, and C.J. Stroud takes a shot. Yeah. I think everyone snapped with the same idea. You need to get him out there, and you need to get him out there now. Yeah. And 
it wasn't just us who thought that because what happens? In comes Jared Patterson. And this entire offensive line looks different. This mm-hmm. offense looks different. And it ends up with a very good Joe Mixon touchdown. But sad to see Jared Patterson go back. Big Sarge, he tweeted out today, 10 I emojis, Texans fans. So there is about to be a change. Y'all asked for it. I guess they heard you. Yeah. Could that be Kenyon Green officially benched, no longer considered a starter? Is it time to see Kendrick Green? Is your yeah. O-line coach Chris Drouser, uh getting fired? I think we would have heard something about that by now. Yeah, especially know, on a short week. Like there's something coming. Yeah, I don't know if you want to make that move on a short week, but we'll see how they play against uh, the Jets coming up. I Here's the thing. I, I heard the commentator say that uh, quarterback coach Gerard Johnson got in Kenyon Green's face Good. right before he came back into the game. This was after Patterson was hurt and told him straight up, hey, bro, like you got to protect CJ better. And I... I Maybe Kenyon Green is checked out because, I mean, immediately, as soon as he came back in, he was getting beat like a broomstick, with like he, yeah, somebody had a broomstick. He's just not good, man. And you're you're probably uh, – I know you're one of our younger Texans fans, but you're you're old enough to remember uh, Brandon Brooks, right? Of course. Okay. Yes. Come on. I'm not, the, you know, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not that young, man. You know, we knew what he was in in Houston, and then he goes to Philadelphia and becomes an all-pro guard. He was so yeah. stressed out that, you know, under this Bill O'Brien offense, he couldn't get it together, but it goes yeah. somewhere else and has a fantastic well, experience with the Super Bowl ring. If you recall, though, the reason he got paid by Philadelphia is because he did have a really good season here. And if you if you correct me if I'm wrong, was it his third or his fourth year he was still very young i feel like you were about to pay him and they decided not to yeah yeah yeah. because he 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 played two three really bad years and then he had maybe a year and a half here where he was really really good and then yeah like you said um maybe you thought about paying him but maybe the texans felt like they they were going to and and then i don't think he was gonna you know he wanted to return either with yeah probably not he was under with bill o'brien so uh, what i was trying to because Kenyon is in his, is this his third, third season? Year. This is his third year. And he spent most of his rookie year hurt. So uh, it's just for what for what you have, you have a franchise quarterback. You have a team who's looking to do things that they haven't done before. Unfortunately for Kenyon Green, I guess, you really don't have time to be patient with him. And you, you don't have time to wait for him to develop like a Brandon Brooks. You need somebody in there who can produce now. And that's why, you know, I suggested on last week's show, maybe move Juice to guard, play Patterson at center. Um, I don't I don't know what it looks like, but I think on Thursday night, um, I'm going to have a real problem with D'Amico Ryans if Kenyon Green is starting uh, at right or I'm sorry, at left guard uh, next to Larry Tunsil. No, I don't think Kenyon Green would be starting if I'm putting any money on it. It it is that bad. It has been that bad. And when you have a franchise quarterback, you know, you just mentioned he has no time to get better. When you have someone like C.J. Stroud, he needs to be protected. He needs to have time to operate back there. We see C.J. Stroud now kind of struggling on some of the throws that he made last year. Mm -hmm. You know, the only conclusion that we can draw is that he doesn't have any confidence, any faith in this offensive line. And. I mean, I'm not blaming him when he I mean, he's been under pressure for most of the time, almost 50 percent of the time he drops back to throw the football, Nick. Yeah, he's been getting hit a lot, too. Even when he's not sacked, he's he's taking a whole lot of hits, man. It's yeah. I, I was just about to ask you that, like how much responsibility is it time for us to start criticizing CJ a little bit for the uh, lack of production in this offense? I mean, absolutely not. When you are under pressure 50 percent of the time. How can you successfully operate? If anything, when you see the throws that he makes, right, we're like, wow, CJ Shaw was able to make that throw under pressure. That is insane. You give him the Indianapolis Colts offensive line and it's, you know, it's over. CJ Stroud has been magical all year behind this horrible offensive line. And I was listening to the Locked On Texans today with, um, uh, Big Sarge, and they mentioned that, you know, a change needs to be made. 
Yeah, for sure. Let me ask you this. Patterson's probably in concussion protocol at least for a week or two. Um, what do you think the offensive line should look like next week? Or I'm sorry, this uh yeah, next week versus the um versus the Jets. Yeah, uh Lermy Tunsil left tackle, Kendra Green left guard, Drew Scruggs center, Shaq Mason right guard, and Titus Howard right tackle. Okay. So Run that by me one more time. Who's who's so Lermy Tunsil left tackle? Yep. Kendra Green left guard. So you want Kendra Houston. Green in there? Okay, I yeah, thought you said yeah, Kenyon. Jared Green. Patterson's not going to pass protocol. <laughs> no, 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 for sure. Okay, what about moving Howard over to guard? Like we saw him a little bit last season. I mean, he's not even good as a guard, bro. For being completely <laughs> honest with you, uh, I do like him there at right tackle. Right, he like. Uh, Outside of him tripping on himself and tripping over Dawson Schultz, yeah. you know, we haven't really had a, you know, an issue on the right side. It, 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 don't get me wrong, there still is an issue. I wonder if Blake Fisher is ready. We've yeah. seen him come in and struggle, too. Yeah. So I don't think uh, Titus Howard moves to left guard. Okay, we'll we'll see what happens, man. But I think all of us are in agreement. That would it surprise me, though. cannot be Kenyon Green. <laughs> No, it's it over, just can't be. It can't be. And um, that is unfortunate for him. Uh, you know, I mean, it's real easy for us as fans to sit here and talk trash about guy. I mean, but, you know, this is his job. And I'm I, I, I refuse to believe the dude just doesn't give a damn. I know it looks like that sometimes when he's getting beat. But uh, something's just not something's just not clicking there. And maybe it is a coaching issue. I'm not sure. I want to talk about injuries uh, to the offense. Obviously, we saw. Um, Stefan Diggs go down with a non-contact injury. I don't. I was searching for an update on that before we got started today. I still haven't seen anything. Um, once again, we've talked about how this wide receiver room is supposed to be the deepest room on the team. Well, we're gonna find out again because now you have T, um, Nico Collins down and you have Stefan Diggs down. I do want to give Tank Dell a little bit of credit. I thought he yeah. stepped up and made some pretty big plays. John Mechie had a couple of catches yesterday. Uh, do you have confidence without your top two receivers now that they can at least maintain what they've been doing on offense? Or do you think it's going to get worse? No, I mean, whenever I have CJ, man, I have all the confidence in the world. I'm also confident because I have number 28, Joe Mixon, in the run of the football. Mm -hmm. um, Xavier Hutchison has stepped up the last couple of weeks. I've had some big moments, some big plays. Uh, Robert Woods, your veteran, had stepped up, made some plays. People forget, man, last year, the first month of the season, Robert Woods led the NFL for the first five weeks of the season and catches on third and fourth down, and he had a big yeah. catch on third and long yesterday. Um, there's always going to be some concern when there's never – I mean, when there's no Tink down, when there's no Stephon – I'm sorry, when there's no Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs out there. Uh, but it's just going to be, you know, interesting to see how this offense bounces back, but I – you know, I think they just go heavy on the running game, heavy on Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, what we've we've talked about it exhaustingly. Joe Mixon makes up for so many deficiencies in the offensive line. There's so many times he looks like he's dead in the backfield, and even if it's just a yard or two, you know, he falls forward. He fights for that little bit of extra yardage, and then um, you know, he's tough to bring down. And we saw just how important he was to this team yesterday. Um, and honestly, the week before, you know, you don't have Joe Mixon these last few weeks. And, you know, that that <laughs> you said it's better to be uh, six and two than five and three. I mean, we probably are staring five and three down the right down the face uh, if it's not for Joe Mixon. Um, so I'm just uh, hopefully Stefan Diggs is OK. I don't think you want to obviously go for a long period of time uh, without him. In the lineup, I thought he did play very well. He's played very yeah, well, even despite like he was the fact that's the Fawn Diggs game. Yeah, and he has played well even when the offense as a whole hasn't clicked. Like he's been a really good receiver for this team, as we should have expected. You know, he's been consistent. Um, so hopefully, uh, we'll we'll knock on wood and and hopefully there's nothing serious going on there. You always worry when you see a non-contact injury. Um, that kind of makes you hold your breath a little bit. Uh, so we have a short turnaround. Everything we've said about the Texans, are they good enough to beat the Jets on a short week? Absolutely. The Jets are horrible. They just lost to the New England Patriots, a team that we put up 40 boards on. Mm -hmm. There is nothing going right 
in New York. It's almost scary because I think the biggest opponent on Thursday night is the stadium. <laughs> yeah. Leave there healthy. But yeah. Aaron Rodgers is not playing well. The addition of Devontae Adams did nothing. The firing of Robert Sala just continues to just look just stupider and stupider yeah. every <laughs> yeah. single launch that adds up. You know, real quick, going back to Stefan, I feel like if it was an ACL, we probably would have heard something by now. Um, you know, maybe he's getting multiple opinions. Yeah. When you look at some of the doctors who have put their videos out there, they said it does look like an ACL or it could be, a, you know, a MCL. Now, I think an MCL is between four to six weeks of being out. So I already did the math. Then you could potentially have him back by Kansas City, Baltimore. Mm. So, you know, praying for the absolute best. That would be yeah, a yeah. Christmas gift, right? Getting back to Stephon <laughs> Diggs for, you know, yeah, the yeah. latter part of the season. And for sure. Playoffs. Uh, you know, but on to New York, man. You know, you're, you're a banged up team right now. You don't have a bye week for a foreseeable future. <laughs> you know, the good nope. thing is you have a a struggling New York Jets team that just cannot get it right, a respectable defense, and that's going to be a problem. Quentin Williams is a damn good defensive tackle. Yeah. So good matchup coming up, man. But, hey, dude, we got to talk about this defense. I want to talk about the defense because I said it earlier. That's how they're going to win games. Absolutely. And – it turns out, I don't think the wide receiver room is the deepest room. I think this defense is just the deepest side of the ball altogether, man. It doesn't matter who's in, who's out. This defense seems to continue to ball out and produce, man. And that is going to be, not surprisingly, the identity of this team because of uh, Danico, I'm sorry, D'Amico Ryans being the head coach. Um, are you okay with that, man? I said earlier, like, we're not going to be the greatest show on turf. Are you okay to continue winning the games the way they've been winning them? As long as I see a W next to that column, man, let's keep it going. This is a Super Bowl caliber defense, Nick. Mm -hmm. And you have to give credit to your head coach, D'Amico Ryans. I mean, it's game changing. Will Anderson Jr. and Daniel Hunter, they have arrived. They mm -hmm. both have a sack in the past three weeks. Um, Will Anderson Jr., seven and a half. And I think Daniel Hunter has five and a half. These boys keep it going. It's going to be dangerous. And I believe they had eight press pressures apiece on Sunday. Dude, they're turning it up. These defensive tackles, man. It seems like every other week, one of them is making a sack. Tim Settle Jr. has played good. Mario Edwards Jr. had played good for Lorenzo Fatsukasi. Looks good. You added Devin White just a couple of days ago, and he mm -hmm. had some immediate pressures yep. on Anthony Richardson, a big hit on Josh Downs, sending him five feet out of bounds. Shout out to Devin White. He had himself a game, and I'm glad yeah, that for he, sure. I'm glad that he here played more than Jake Hansen. Yeah. So that should tell us something going forward. You know, Derek Stingley lights out. Eric Murray, don't throw at me. You know, <laughs> three batted balls. It seemed like they were in a row. Dude, yeah. Kamari Lasseter, test me deep. It's not going to work. Yeah. Jalen Petrie, I'll pick it off, dude. Almost had one last week against Green Bay, but my, you know, linebacker never Hewitt got it instead of me. Yeah. You're without Aziz Al Shayer. You're without Henry Tuatu. You're without Christian Harris. I could. You're without Jimmy Ward. Yeah. And this Houston Texans defense, man, is making plays day in and day out. Mark Vandermeer put out, you know, this type of quote of. You know, some of the worst performances uh, completion percentage-wise in the past 10 years, one of them Josh Allen, one of them Anthony Richardson. The one thing those two guys had in common, they played the 2024 Houston Texans defense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It can't – we can't go without saying that um, Anthony Richardson's bad, bro. Like, he's just not good. Uh, oh, uh, we knew that. Yeah, yeah, he's not good. But still – that's what you're supposed to do to quarterbacks who aren't good. We've seen Texans teams in the past all of a sudden let guys have career days on them when they Josh weren't supposed Adam was to. was in there too, man. You know, yeah, yeah. His name in there. No, 100%. 100%. So I agree with you. The defense is definitely the strong suit of this team. Hopefully, as this year continues, the offense can be just good enough. But I don't think we're going to see those 35 to 10 40 to 17. I just don't think we're going to see those this year, man. This team is destined to win close games. The good news is it's built to win close games. And once again, 
in the crunch time when they needed to, you know, they executed. Um, and so I listen, man, <laughs> I, I listened to a lot of, I actually didn't listen to a lot of sports radio before I got back into the podcast scene and started doing this show with you. Um, but at, at six and two, man, and a, po- a very real possibility of going seven and two, I said a little bit last week, man, there's just so much negativity surrounding the team and I get it, man. They're not, um, they're, they're not, you know, the old St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, they're not, you know, the Kansas city chiefs, but just remember what you had three years ago, man. Like we have a quality football team. We have a quarterback who we know if you give him time in the pocket and you give him some receivers that know how to get open, he's going to put up numbers. It's just they got to work through whatever they're working through right now, except the fact that you got a really good running back. You have hopefully a very quality uh, backup running back. You've got the best kicker in the game. This is how we're going to win games, man. Let's just get used to it and let's embrace it. And let's, as we're looking down the calendar, looking at the games, just find the ones that, hey, which ones are is running the ball and having a strong defense? Which of the games on our schedule is that going to give us the best advantage? And then, you know, come come seasons in, man, you see where you are. At this point, that, that's where I am with this team, Ruben. Man, dude, you sound very negative, man. No, I'm not being negative. I'm <laughs> I'm happy that they're winning. I'm listening to a lot of negative talk well, about this, this team happens, Nick, in the you city. You have the expectations. Yeah. Right? I said it. Last year was fun. You were not supposed to go to the playoffs. You were not supposed to win the division. You were not supposed to be in 10 plays. We expected all that this year. Yeah. And here's the thing. Are they doing what, you know, what we expected? Yes. Are they doing it the way that we thought they were going to do it? No. Nope. And this is, you know, hey, we could be happy, but, you know, they always say do not, in, you know, ignore in victory what you want to defeat. And the fact that the matter is we understand that this offense is a problem. Yeah. And, you know, the concerns, the negativity, man, it's warranted. Until this Houston Texans team could beat a – very good opponent, right? Let's say you beat a Detroit. Let's say you beat a Kansas City or a Baltimore. One yeah. of those three, we're going to say this might have been the biggest win of the year. Right. Until the Houston Texans do that, you'll hear the tone of everyone start to shift towards, okay, now you can do it. Now it's all systems go, right? Yeah. Like I said, Nick, man, we haven't won nothing yet. And that's so that's the key. Then, what you know, what can we... What can we, you know, go off of? There is no history to go off of. We're creating our own history right now. I understand. And once you get that signature win, then it's it's all systems go. I 100% believe. Don't have me go into Detroit 7-2 and two and I have a possibility to win that game. And if I do, oh, my God, you're going to hear <laughs> the entire, you know, shift of the narrative. This Houston Texans team is legit. It don't matter if it's by seven, if it's by three, if it's by one, they're going to get it done. Because that's exactly what I'm going to say if you beat Detroit on a Sunday night football game. Yeah, for sure. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, statistically, Patrick Mahomes having the worst season of his career, uh, but the Kansas City Chiefs haven't lost a game because they just know how to win. And but how to win. They're also, you know, three-time Super Bowl champions. So people are going to cut them a little bit more slack when they're playing ugly and winning ugly games versus the Houston Texans who, what once again. What do you say about the Astros, dude? Like, I don't care about the regular season. Just yeah. get to the playoffs. Right. 100%. It was like that for a decade. Yeah. Because they had proven once for they got sure. to the playoffs what exactly. they can do. So and I understand. I understand. Once you prove yourself, Houston. You get a win against Detroit after you get a win against New York, and you're what seven and two, eight and two. Come on, man. Yeah. How can you not think? Oh, this this season might be something, right? And I've I told my you know my significant other this the other day. I'm like, this team is gonna is gonna set me up for failure. They're gonna break my <laughs> heart because every single hey, you were the win, one who told me we got to get rid of that uh, mindset. You were the one who told me no, that, No, Ruben. no, 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 <laughs> What I mean is not because of the past, right? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I feel like every single win that you add on, every single, you know, scrappy win that you continue to put on the belt, 
Mm-hmm. I feel like that one loss is just gonna kill me, dude. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Gonna, I, I thought you. it was gonna be in Green Bay. <laughs> I was, you know, I was surprised how I felt after. But yeah. you know, for example, right? Like, let's knock on wood. Let's say you beat a Detroit, you beat a Kansas City, and then you once again lose in the division mm-hmm. around. Oh my God, I will yeah. fall to my knees and just cry. Please. However. <laughs> Please don't overlook the Jets, though. We made that mistake last season. Like, it's, <laughs> I mean, they're probably worse than what they are last year. They might be. You might be right and about that's that. With all this star power, bro. Yeah. I mean, I I understand the owner going all in when you have a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. But I saw this tweet that said, you know, he had to go into a you know a dark hole for I think a week or a month <laughs> and decide he wanted to play football. Yeah, yeah. Or he wanted to check one of the two. <laughs> hey, I mean, he, he, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Paid. This is this is what I want to say, man. I I do not look forward to doing this show if the Texans don't beat the Jets, uh, but I think they're going to. Um, I think the defense is strong enough, the running game is strong enough, and they're going to have the added value of the Twin Toros having their back on our live stream with athletically declined sports. On the ESPN Houston YouTube channel. That'll also be streaming on 713 Houston Sports. On Houston Sports Day of the Union podcast. Uh, I'm looking very much forward to that man. We'll get a chance to break down that game. Um, I don't know. It's it's a quick turnaround man. I'm, I'm sure me and you can get a preview video out. Sometime in the next couple of days. Um, but I am very. I'm looking very much forward to that watch party man. Uh, do you see us like. What would have to go wrong for them to lose that game? You can't run the football. Yeah. That 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 for me would have to be wrong. And the New York Jets offense gets it together. But the way this Houston Texans defense has been swarming lately, mm-hmm. I don't see that happening. And I, and I don't see no one stopping um, Joe Mixon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the the uh, Patriots, did they, they played Thursday night. No, they played uh they played Sunday day, like an afternoon game, right? Yeah. So they're both on the equal amount of rest. Um Texans are going on the road, but you know, mm. one team's really defeated. Yeah. One I think team so. right now is already looking at the end of the year to just get it over with. It's yeah. sad what's going on up there for the New York Jets, but one team is trying to still stack up wins. <sighs> Still yeah. trying to get it together. This is a very long but short season, Nick. Yeah, yeah. It's so crazy how you know how much we can we're talk almost halfway done about man. a eighteen week season, right? And we're almost halfway there. Yeah, man. It's uh, I just you know you look at uh, I see I see the names Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and it just yeah it worries me a little bit. But the Texans should win this game. I don't know if there's a line on it yet. Um. The Texans should be favored if I'm if I'm being completely honest with you. So this is one that I don't want them to overlook the opponent. But man, look, you get this dub. I don't care how you get it. It's one of those things. I don't care if it's a safety. Let's just keep stacking up wins right now as this team tries to get healthy and as this team hopefully figures out the offensive line situation and starts to improve that offense. Like I said, to be just good enough to with your strong defense and with your strong running game. Uh, to stack up as many wins as possible, man, because you want the road to the Super Bowl to hopefully at least have to go up to the AFC Championship game through Houston. We'll see. Um, but just keep stacking up the wins, man. I, I, I'm happy with the team. I don't want – you said I sounded negative earlier. I'm happy with the team. Um, once again, my expectation wasn't for them to steamroll through the season. As a matter of fact, when I did my schedule, I think I had them with at least one or two more losses at this point. So they've already exceeded my expectation as far as wins and losses goes. Um, but we'll, we'll we'll see what happens, man. I, I'm just looking forward to, to, to doing this show with you again, man, next week. Uh, I'm looking forward once again to the watch party. Uh, I'm going to remind you guys to please subscribe to the ESPN Houston YouTube channel if you haven't done so yet. Uh, save the Twin Toros podcast to your playlist. Save the Athletic Decline play, uh podcast to your playlist as well um we're so thankful to espn houston for giving us an opportunity to share houston sports to celebrate houston sports with you uh next week after the thursday night game uh our reaction show will be on ruben's channel that's 713 houston sports once again i will have his link in the description and you will find me on houston sports state of the union podcast 
My link trees will be in the description as well. Give me a score prediction, man, before we get out of here. Yeah, before we go, I checked BetUS. Texans are currently one-point dogs. They're one-point the dogs. dogs. Yeah. Hey. But on the road, that's kind of like they're favoring you, bro. A one-point dog on the road, that's like a pick em, right? Pretty much. Nah, pick em will be even. It, yes, it would be even. But on the road, that, you know, that might as well be I a mean, I'm taking Houston as soon as I get off. Are oh, you going to put down on it? You're going you gonna to put some money on it? You're going to put bro, your money where your mouth bro, is? Bro, man, you is giving me a 150%, <laughs> you know, you know sign-up bonus. That's what man. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, course, okay. You know, I wanted I to get that score prediction too. from you just in case we don't get a preview video in because, like I said, it's a quick turnaround for the Texans, quick turnaround for us. I know you and I are both very busy. Lots of Let's things go 20, going on. 24-17. 24-17. 24 Damn. 24-17. I'm going to say 17 to 10. Oh, <laughs> 17 to 10 attack. 17 to 10 yeah another heart attack game um but Devon, I, uh Derek Stingley shuts down Devontae Adams oh absolutely absolutely I'm looking forward to that matchup actually um once again really happy with the team really happy with the defense happy with the podcast we appreciate all of you guys so much for continuing to support us Ruben talk to the people before we get out of here thank you everyone who was a part of this episode means the absolute world we're going to continue dropping fire content for you guys this houston texas team is going to continue to put up w's and we're going to pretend to put up great content thank you all so much amen. guys we'll see you next week amen guys we will see you guys next week in the meantime I want you to stay 10 toes down for the h we love you good night <laughs>